Welcome to your Cochrane right now. This is a weekly podcast all about the best town in the world, Cochrane, Alberta. My name's Eric Ruttle, joined as always by Lauren Meister. And Lauren, uh, we might have to start setting up gates around town. Too many tourists might be coming in to check out our new feature, the Cochrane Pyramid. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've got this big mystery right now. No one knows how it got there. No one knows how long it's been there exactly because it kind of just appeared. No one knows how long it's going to be there. And we don't really know like how tall it is or the dimensions. Like Mm. there's so many things about it that we just don't know. And uh, we're getting lots of questions Mm. to our newsroom. We're getting uh, lots of different questions, people talking about it on social media as well. So if you haven't seen it, it's on the the (laughs) west side of town near the 1A22 intersection and it's in the construction zone. Now it might just look like a dirt pile. But it's got a perfect point on it. So people are actually sitting in traffic looking over and going, the Cochrane Pyramid, I've seen it done all over social media. People are talking about it and saying, there's no way this was made by a machine. So, aliens, Lauren. Aliens in Cochrane, it's been confirmed here first. That's the only explanation. Only- yeah, because I mean, there is no other explanation. No. I mean, I'm not a construction worker, so I don't really know the capabilities of different machinery. But yeah. we are being told that there is no type of machinery that's capable of making that perfect, perfect peak. So do you think so, uh, Mayor Jeff Janung will hold uh, like a press conference? Is that who we send in to talk to them first? Like, hey, Mayor, you need to go tell them we're best town in the world. We come in peace. Like, is this what we go with? I mean, usually you would send like the leader of the, the leader. community right. to go do that. I think that's probably the best idea. Okay. Yeah. So we'll get them on the phone here. We'll set them up uh, with the aliens here pretty, pretty <laughs> soon. But uh, it is it is pretty cool to see. Like. It's huge. It's very cool. And it'd be really cool to actually kind of get up close and personal. Would it be something that you would want to get close to or would that make you nervous? Uh, I think I get a lot of dirt in my shoes if I try to climb. Why wouldn't you put boots on? I don't know. You don't want to wreck it. What if you step on it and just like starts collapsing and then you've destroyed the ninth wonder of the world? And then what if you get sunk into it, like sucked into it, like quicksand or something? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of mysteries to the Maybe there's somebody like stuck inside there that we don't even know. Oh, this this has a lot of layers. (laughs) And I'm very concerned about the brand new Cochrane Pyramid. But go check it out. It's on the west side of town. And <laughs> the this is kind of hard to segue into, but uh, Saturday is going to be a huge day because it's Truth and Reconciliation Day here in Cochrane, and there is a ton of stuff happening down at the SLS Center. So uh, they're really gone big this year with a traditional powwow, and it is eight hours, seven hours full of different uh, programming. It, yeah, exactly. So it starts at, I believe, 1 o'clock, goes nice. until about 8 p.m. So it's going to be an entire day of dancing and drumming. They're going to have different uh, a different market on hand oh, there nice. with different um, uh, local artists selling different products as well. You can buy orange shirts there designed by local um, different artisans as well, um, different traditional food, food trucks as well, uh, some great uh, original music as well in oh. different traditional languages, and just the whole concept behind all of this is just to build relationships between Cochrane and some of our neighbors. No, exactly. And it, it is so cool to see how much it's grown in town in just a short time. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so if you're looking, this is free for the whole family and it should be a ton of fun. That is on Saturday on uh, Truth and Reconciliation Day. And of course, fall is now here in town. And this is the time when animals are the most rampant. Over town, we had like a little baby deer. She was so cute in front of our station there. But Mama Deer made sure we didn't get too close. It's true. We went out there. We were grabbing photos and whatnot. But I've got to say, Mama Deer wasn't really following the rules because the rules, the deer she, rules. Yeah, I mean, we have a crosswalk mm-hmm. pretty much right in front of the radio station, and she was leading her baby deer across the street. And she was kind of just left of the crosswalk. And it really threw a lot of the traffic off. All of a sudden, people were slamming on their brakes. Luckily, Cocker and drivers are pretty, you know, adept to people not following the rules. So then they, (laughs) 
<laughs> jaywalking. Exactly. Yeah, let's so call they, space bait. They didn't hit the mama deer or the baby deer, but uh, the mama deer does really need to pay attention and make sure that that baby deer is a little bit more safe and just kind of stick to that crosswalk a little bit better. Because in my neighborhood, I see deer every single day and the deer actually go right on the crosswalk. You mom shaming that deer? Saying she's a not a good bit. mom? A little, wow. little bit. Yeah. Holy. All right. I know. Well, we'll have to get her into a <laughs> debate it with you. <laughs> but that's not the only ones. Deers are now like so common. We drive by them and I'm like, oh, kids, look, deers. And they're like, yeah, cool, dad. It's like cows, horse, deer. But there yeah. was a big kitty down in uh, Riverview, actually. A big old bobcat was found just wandering the streets. And uh, when you first saw the photo, you're like, Eric, that's a joke. But it wasn't. <laughs> it was a real bobcat in Cochrane. Well, because there was all sorts of different jokes and yes. stuff. And it, at first it, it looked, it was too clear of a picture and it was right in the middle of the day. Yeah. So typically, like big kitties like that, they prowl at night. They don't come out during right. the day. Yeah, bobcats so and cougars. Yeah, and exactly. You don't necessarily see them right in the middle of the day. So at first I was like, oh, I was just scrolling really quickly on social media. And I was like, ah, that's just a joke. No way, no way. But no, this kitty cat was just rolling around, prowling during the day, just kind of hanging out as far as we know there's only been one kind of nice. sighting but uh, and hasn't caused any issues but it was just kind of hanging out in the neighborhood now there was also a bear spotted here and there but the one animal i'm most excited for raccoons there was raccoons in sunset ridge a whole clan of them and uh they were up to no good there was four raccoons getting into people's garbages they are so cute is that what it's called is it a clan when there's a whole group? I don't know. Like, But they're like, would they be robbers? Is it a squad? I don't know. Because what do you call like thieves? I don't know. The thieves of raccoons. I don't actually. I don't know. We don't. <laughs> but both, you like, do you like raccoons? Yeah, except for yeah. one time I was in Vancouver at Stanley Park and we were on a hike and I was talking and then I looked down and there was something on my leg and a raccoon was climbing me, Lauren. Me? No, he was like, ah, and I was like, ah, I've never seen a raccoon before. And apparently they're not very nice when they climb your leg. So I shook him off and I ran away. So you didn't get bit or anything? No. Oh, okay. I just think raccoons are the <laughs> coolest animal. Like, just like, they look so cool. Yeah. You yeah. know, they're, they're so fun. I've never seen one in person. I mean, I've seen them in a zoo maybe but zoo. yeah <laughs> crazy maybe. zoo you're going i don't to. know if they've been in a zoo i don't know where <laughs> i've seen them maybe i've just seen photos of them i've never seen them up close and personal but i think they're cool yeah. i like them i've yeah. seen you know the cartoon the raccoons when exactly. i was a kid that was a great rocket show. raccoon you know so yeah, uh, you great. might see them wandering around town maybe. there's been a lot of bunnies this year here in town. tons of bunnies yeah. tons of deer i mean we yeah. see those like every day exactly so next up is the raccoons that's uh, that's for sure and the dogs because there is a ton of interest in the Jim Offelman Memorial uh, Park down there. So the pathway that goes from the old pedestrian bridge all the way around to the SLS Center mm -hmm. has been hotly debated over the last couple of years because there's almost two sides. There's the dog park. People are like, hey, that's where I walk my dog off leash. They love the water. They do their thing. And then there's the people who are like, Hey, it's a multi-use park. I like to ride my bike. I like to have my kids down there and I don't want to see your smelly dog. Now they're saying, hey, let's have a conversation of it. And 1,100 people are showing up. Yeah. So, well, so far, there's so probably far. going to be more people. That's 1,100 people who have signed up so far. Oh my gosh. So think about the people who are going to sign up last minute and yeah. the people who aren't going to sign up and they're just going to show up for this big community meeting. So there's obviously a lot of people in this community who have a lot of opinions. What? Um, I know. Wow. I know. Shocker. Um, <laughs> but there's... Pretty much everybody in Cochrane has a dog. Like, yes. we've established yeah. that. It's like you and Ellen down the street who yeah. don't have dogs. That's pretty much, yeah. yeah. I'm definitely the minority. Yeah. Um, so I frequent that pathway a lot. Nice. And uh, I, I do, despite what you think, I do see all sides to the story. Okay. But... I, th I feel like there's got to be a solution that's going to make everyone happy. There's yeah. got to be a way that we can have a safe pathway for children and people to get to our only recreation center um, without dogs nipping at our ankles. So you want right? to make it dog owners only. Uh, you guys can just take the long way around? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Exactly. You heard it here first. Yeah, yeah. Lock no. out the non-dog owners. No, it's going to be... One of the things I think, though, is like 1,100 people, let's say it's 
truly split down the middle. 600, 600. Do the dog people bring their dogs? Like, so oh, when you're kind of like- Oh, the meeting. Yeah, it's like, my Fido likes it. Oh, could you imagine? They might, because I think it's at the park, isn't it's, it? I, I believe it's at the park, yeah. So why wouldn't you? I, that's true. <laughs> that would be a very loud and busy meeting. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. But uh, you can jump over to CockerNow.com if you want to participate. It's going to be. I I want to go and just kind of watch from the sidelines to see if it dissolves. Like, are they bringing chairs? Is it just like a line of people? I don't know. I I bet you they were expecting like. 50 people? Yeah, not Over a thousand? Well, and honestly, you're going to have to have some kind of sound system, too. Oh, yeah. Just whoever's speaking, and then is there going to be a Q&A? Like, there's got to be a, I don't know if people, they already had a survey, though, so okay. I think a lot of people already had their opportunity to kind of have their voices heard. Right. So now is it just kind of like a, a presentation? I don't really know what to expect. I don't know either. So that goes down right at the start of October. And the story we've been following throughout uh, the last month was Bo Ridge got shut down a shelter in place. There was an active shooter, actually, earlier this month. Yeah, well, can we say active shooter? Well, he was active because he was on a scooter. And, and he, he had shoot. a gun. He but had yeah, a gun. Yeah, so he never actually did fire any shots, as right. far as we know. But yeah, uh, so he was kind of on the loose there for a while. Uh, so he's been arrested. He's yes. behind bars. All is well in the world. Police are not looking for him anymore. But the big question is... Where is his scooter? Where is the scooter? He was found in Kelowna. Mm-hmm. So that means he ran from Bro Ridge on a scooter, he which scooted. we know. He, he didn't sc- run. He scooted. Did he scoot all the way to Kelowna? Like, did he jump on the number one and just go, like, through the Coca-Cola and all that stuff? When like, you did the math, how long was that going to take him? 27 hours if he's riding full speed. But do you stop and, like, if you're a wanted criminal, do you stop and charge your scooter? Like, hey, guys, well, I'm you'd just have charging to. I don't think my scooters scooter. last that long. He no. would have have to stop and charge. But where's the scooter? Where is where, the scooter? I know. Where is the scooter? I would assume this will all come out in the court case. Uh, the court case, yes. Please, uh, one question left. Where is the scooter? So, yeah, that story, it's nice that we have, like, a bow on it. It's all wrapped up other than the scooter. Other than the scooter. The scooter it's scooter not wrapped up not... because we need to know where the scooter is. That is everything <laughs> happening in Cochrane right now. You can grab this uh, podcast on all your favorite services. Like, subscribe, share, and until next week, we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah.